My name is Victor Stapley, and I'm the founder, CEO of Social Cred. I used to run the um, CEO of a, a large company, worldwide engineering company, with approximately 1,500 employees. And at that time, there was no better ambassador for our company than the people that worked in the company. And that was very much a word of mouth thing. This way we had people that were engaging with the market, but also we had people who were recruiting other people to join the company. And it was very effective for your own individual people already working in the company to be talking highly about the company that they work for to attract other talent to join your company. Well, fast forward a few years, and social media really is the way around how we can make mass communication happen. And through social media, then, we're able now to communicate on a much wider scale, not just using our own uh, channels, potentially, but those also of all our employees. So I don't know if you're familiar with, with um, Guy Kowalski. Anyway, great brands are not built by one person. They're built by thousands of people who spread the word. word. Now, that can be, obviously, your customers. It can be people who have experienced your brand. But there's nobody better to be talking about your brand than the people that actually work in your own business. There's a range of benefits if we start thinking about employee advocacy. Um, and these can be around actually the benefit it does for you as a company with your own internal employees. But it also can be benefits that actually are reaching out into the market. Now, it can be for attracting talent into your own company. It can also be for marketing the products um, by your own company. But it can be also promoting the successes that your company has in its own um, development, whether that could be a technical development or, or otherwise. Either way, we can look into those benefits um, in more detail. So <clears throat> employee advocacy is about your employees um, talking about your company. And really, in this respect, we're talking, we're really um, looking at how they can be talking about your company across social media channels. When we're looking at social media channels, this can be across the classic business to business channel, which is LinkedIn. It can, however, also be on the more other business to, con to consumer channels like Instagram and X and Facebook and even, even TikTok. So, we kind of break it down into a few different key points about what employee advocacy means. Um, some of the most important ones, I think, really, is about the authenticity and trust. Because at this point, you're asking your employees to be posting on their own social media channels that they often consider to be their own personal channels and not those that are necessarily being used as an advertising platform for their employer. So it's a very good litmus test, a very good test for understanding actually about how engaged your employees are if you ask them to do posts on their social media about your company. And we'll look into why employees may or may not want to be posting about their employer on their social media um, a little bit later. The key, the key part about it, though, is that it is very cost-effective as a marketing channel. Um, it definitely engages the employees, so your employees are now have to have some further interaction uh, with you and around either content creation or actually just content posting. Um, and it's been proven to show that employees who feel they're part of your journey, who feel they're contribut contributing in some way other than just the work they're doing within the environment in which they work, that actually increase, increases their, their satisfaction. So there's many different reasons why you might be looking to develop an employee advocacy program within your company. Um, so how, how, do they, how do they advocate? What, what are their, their methods around that? Well, the classic one is sharing content on social media. So and when we talked about social media again, we're talking about perhaps, you know, it could be LinkedIn, it could be X, it could be Facebook, it could be Instagram, it could be, it could be TikTok, um, and it could even be um, other streaming platforms as well. They also able to, with this advocacy, give product feedback. So you may be also then asking your employees to be posting about products. But there again, they may be asking their audience to give feedback on the product 
which they may give directly to someone they know rather than actually giving it directly to, to you as, as a brand. They're also exceptionally good at writing reviews. So as we know nowadays, product reviews are very, very important when products are being considered by consumers. And so employees writing reviews of the products can also be beneficial to increase your ratings of the reviews. And last but not least is referring customers. And within customers, I think we should be looking not just at customers, those potentially buying the product, but also potential other customers may be people who may be joining your company. And like I said previously, there's no one better to attract talent to your company than people that are already working within your own organization. There's some key facts we might want to look at about employee advocacy. I include these in here um, largely because people often want to um, believe the facts um, and want facts to speak for it rather than actually just what it can bring in other intangible benefits. Um, but there's definitely work being done um, actually by, um, by, by Nielsen is one organization, another one actually is LinkedIn about what employee advocacy actually can bring in terms of um, benefit to your company. Um, so definitely we're talking about brand recommendation and brand reputation um, and also then around customer acquisition. So these are some of the key tangible benefits we can see from having an employee advocacy program. We'll get on shortly into the kind of some of the do's and don'ts about employee advocacy programs because introducing such a program within your organization can be tricky and it can be viewed also a little bit suspiciously um, by, um, by employees. And so there's certain ways that we need to, the things we need to do to minimize the risk of it not going uh, as smoothly as you wish to. There's another whole area we need to look at when we talk about content and posting content about why employees are advocate. So expecting an employee just to, or all the employees to write about a, a brand new product you might be launching in the market, maybe it's a new um, vacuum clean or something, model XYZ2000, and you may be wishing the employees to be explaining to the audience about what an amazing product that could be. Well, I'm not sure they're necessarily going to do that. So you've got to really often think actually about why your employee would advocate and what kind of content would they be willing to share or not. And this is, this is the key part of it because you need to put yourself into the mindset of an employee about what it is that's going to give them a benefit. And when we look at why people post on social media overall, we can understand what are the key reasons why people post on social media. And when you analyze that, you need to be sure that you as a corporation, you as a company, are actually achieving any one of these individual um, key points and therefore increasing your chances of that employee, that person advocating, posting on your behalf. So they've got to look good. Somehow either they're looking good in this. So it could be content that includes them doing something that actually is beneficial or makes them in, puts them into, into a good light. So that's one of the key areas. They've got to, people someone's got to look good. If they don't look good um, posting something on social media, they're, they're not going to post it. They feel good. So there may be some elements here about what makes them feel good about posting this, right? And it may be in, in that same essence that they're doing good. So you as a company may also be promoting other social causes that you strongly believe in. So again, if the, if the employee is engaged in that cause that you're supporting, perhaps as an environmental effort, perhaps they're doing a, a, a cleanup or something, Perhaps they're doing some new initiatives in recycling. These are the kind of elements that employees are very keen to be promoting across their social media because they know that they're doing good in that respect. And last but not least, there's a reward factor. And this is where we come on to whether we are talking about intrinsic motivation or extrinsic motivation. Each company has its own set of culture around how they reward people and what those rewards could be or should be. And within this respect, um, we're here to advise, but you need to be very aware about what your company culture is and whether reward systems are part of what you should be offering to people to become good advocates for, for your company um, or not. 
let me talk a little bit now about some of the, the do's and don'ts. And, and there aren't very many actually do's and don'ts, but there's some really key ones. So when people want to introduce a corporate um, or an advocacy program into their, um, I'm going to stop presenting um, for a moment. Okay, so when people want to introduce then a employee advocacy um, program into their company, it it has got a good chance of, of failing, and I and I say that in a in a manner that is is um, is designed to make people understand that when we introduce any new process or any new thing in the in corporation, we need to be very mindful about what the culture is of that organization and will employees accept this? And if we want employees to accept it, how are we going to make it acceptable to them? So one of the key elements of this, if you're introducing an employee advocacy program, is to make it voluntary. That means that not everybody needs to be involved in being an advocate for the company. Some people will do so voluntarily and will be very willing to do that. Others may follow some other people that are already doing it, and others may never really want to be doing this and don't see themselves or their role within that company as being someone who needs to be advocating outside of the work they, they do <clears throat> within that corporation. So it's already, it's already very interesting when you start asking other people within your organization um, if they want to take part in this or not, because it is a very good way, very quickly to understand where does that person sit in terms of their um, relationship with you as, as an employer? So voluntary is a, is a key element of it. It needs to be voluntary from the very get-go. The other element of it is if it can be done through individual teams or subgroups within that organization. So if it's a very top-down approach, that actually doesn't necessarily make it successful. We need to be looking at actually smaller groups who are able to manage this themselves. That means it may be a project group that is able then to create some content around the project they're doing. It could be the beginnings, the middle, the end of the project, the success of the project. Those team members are then involved in this. They're involved in that content creation. They're involved in posting that content. And they can manage this themselves within a smaller entity rather than making a larger corporate matter. Because in essence, people in social media want to see a social part of it a part of which involves human beings rather than corporate messages, which is why it's called social media rather than corporate media. So we break it down and make it being used by smaller teams. The engagement rate is much higher. After we've got smaller teams who are involved in, in posting and creating content, so we can go into a kind of wider and more of a corporate matter as well, but start off with, with smaller teams. Um, it's really important to, to make it fun. So it's not about um, having necessary obligations, but people like to have a bit of fun if, if they're going to do this. And they like to be able to see themselves, the, the actual feedback of it as well. So did this work? Did it not work? Was it effective? How did I contribute? Because it's all very well asking someone again, please go and post this, you know, or please take part in this LinkedIn um, post, or please like this LinkedIn post, or please can you share this content on LinkedIn? But people want to know, Afterwards, if they did actually go ahead and share it, what, what happened? You know, how many people shared it? And, and was it successful or not? Did we get any leads from that or not? With the effort that everyone did or that, that I did. Um, and all that feedback part is a really key part of making it actually um, successful and over a long period of time. Because it can be an initiative, but you want it to be a successful, long, long um, running uh, success than just a kind of one-off one -off element to it. I'm talking to you today on behalf of Social Cred. So what we do at Social Cred is a platform entirely designed um, to, to achieve um, what I'm telling you about. So Social Cred, as you may know, it enables your company to transform its employees into corporate ambassadors or corporate advocates. Right? And it is a, in a very efficient method of doing that. It involves a web application and it also involves an, a mobile application. The mobile application is all for the employees, and the web application is for the teams or the managers or the marketing departments or who are there to create the campaigns and share those campaigns at, at scale. Let's have a quick dive into what social credit looks like. Um, so we can actually see firsthand then what that little bit of software looks like that you could be using to create your um, corporate um, advocacy program. 
So let me um, share my screen. Um, let me stop the presentation and I'm going to share my screen. And from, from here, we're able to have a look quickly at some of the functionality of what um, social credit is. So <clears throat> when I come to look at this as a, as a demo today, we've just got a, a snook, the cool sneakers company. So this, in fact, is a, is a B2C brand. And when we come onto the first part of the platform, we can see here we've got a, a dashboard. And the dashboard allows us to see how many members we've got within the system. And also, we've got then the analysis of recent campaigns that have been done, whether it's a news analysis or a content show analysis or a content request analysis, et cetera. But these analysis of all the different campaigns we've, we've run within the system. We're able here to manage our membership. Our membership then are invited. So we can invite people into the platform. And we invite them with an email address. They connect their social media. We can then see what our combined audiences are of not only our own social media, we've got our own social media channels, but then also the social media channels that we have of our membership. So this gives us an, an overall understanding about who is within our own um, system here. When we want to look at our social media part, we can see here, actually, um, this is our own social media, which we connect as the Corpus News Company. When we have a look at our overview, we can also see our audience on social media. So this is now our own individual audience we have across different social media channels that we connect. It can be on Instagram, it can be on TikTok, it can be on YouTube, it can be on X, etc. So we connect our own social media channels, but also when we look at our team members here, we can also see the combined audiences of all our team members that we have as well. So this gives us a much better understanding when we put everyone into a system here, what is our combined audience here of all the employees we might have as advocates. When we come to actually do some, some actual engagements now with our advocates, well, we can simply create news articles. News articles are created um, with, a, with a template. We can have a look at what a template looks like just by editing an existing article. So a template is, is here. We create a news news article, who it's from, and the, the publishing date of it, some news to share, um, some attachments. This can be content. It can be files, it can be PDFs, it can be images, etc. And once we've done that, we may publish this also on our own URL. And by going to the next step, we're able to then choose who we want to share that content to. And we can share it to all the people within the group. We can put people into individual groups if we wish to. We can put in the other organizations as well, or just everyone who's on the system, and we can share that. And those individuals will receive that content on the app, and they can then share that content further. There's another way of doing content sharing, whereby we create also, a, a, this is now a content share. So here we're expecting people to post individually the same content on their social media. Once again, it works in a very similar way. We have a, a title. It's, it's a Van Gogh limited edition of this particular sneaker. We've got a, a creation date of it. We've got a duration of the campaign. We may only want this to be shared across a certain time period so we can coordinate a big impact on social media by everybody sharing at the same time. And from here, once we've got the, the content available, et cetera, we can then go ahead and um, add people to that campaign. And we can, again, add all people that are in the system. We can choose to add just groups of people as well. We've got a group here. We can have, choose all people. Or we can choose people all to share it on either an individual social media channel as well. Or we can choose to have it done on any person's um, social media channels in, in one way as well. So this is the nub, this is the, the essence of a system whereby we can actually very easily create campaigns to share content on social media. We can invite employees into our, our system and from here we're able to manage employee advocacy very simply and keep everybody um, engaged with what we're trying to achieve and at the same time then enable us to reward employees and understand did people post something? Did people not post something? You may be thinking, well, we already kind of do that. In fact, we already kind of do posts on LinkedIn, or we actually just put something in a WhatsApp group and ask people to share it. And that may be working for you. However, when you're trying to do this at a scale and trying to do it efficiently, what the system permits you to do as social cred is enable you to do this at a great scale where you're able to 
Now, share that content, but not only share that content, enable people to post it with a couple of clicks on the app, the companion app, and at the same time, though, see exactly who posted the content, who didn't post the content, and if they give a reason why they didn't post it, it also informs you about how you may be wanting to change the content in the future, the future campaigns. So it provides you with a, a full toolkit of everything you need from creating the campaign initially, sharing with all the people that you wish to share it with, and seeing the results of that share. And that's the benefit of having a dedicated system to be doing that, rather than relying upon existing communication channels like WhatsApp. Last but not least, social cred is um, a <clears throat> the, the brand of, of what we have, but this platform is white labeled. What does that mean? That means that social cred disappears and your company now is the operator of the, of the platform. We provide the technology, but whether it's the mobile app or the web app, it's fully branded to your company. So this is now your company's mobile app for being an employee. It becomes your company's ambassador app. <clears throat> well, I'd just like to say thank you, everybody, for your attention. If you would like to get in touch, please do so via our website. I put up the details here once again. And here, please get in touch with us via the website. I'll be more than happy to do you a demo at any time so you're able to see firsthand the functionality of social credit and how it could help your company turn your employees into advocates. Yeah. Many thanks, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.